And we're back. Welcome to Printer Games, the podcast about what's new and awesome in 3D printing for gamers. I'm your host, Jefferson J. Thacker, also known as Param, and I'm joined by... Kristen Sowards, also known as Lost Spheres. And Kristen, I love 3D printing. I know you love 3D printing. Mm-hmm. And boy, when I get a new printer, I burn it up, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, nonstop. I mean, once I figured out my FDM, I ran that for what? two and a half weeks with like less than three or four hours of breaks. So right. yeah, surprised it didn't like melt, honestly. <laughs> and after years of, you know, you know, budgeting and expensive box sets. And especially lately when you see some of the prices on things, like I was looking through my local game store and it was like $200 for the fortress of, I can't pronounce this word from middle earth. I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, that castle of plastic is $200. And that's a really big, expensive boat. Mm-hmm. And how much is that box set filled with Space Marines? How many horse heresies? You... Oh, my gosh, horse heresies. <laughs> oh, I just so love easy. that. that That's our new our new benchmark. This printer costs mm-hmm. two horse yeah. heresies. Yeah. And, and in the news, like, there's lots you can get for a horse heresy right now. Uh, oh, yeah. So many yeah. printers are down below, like... Like you can get an Elgu Mars three for less than a Horus Heresy at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and and a bunch of good FDM printers are in way low. Mm-hmm. Of that. Yeah, Ender three for one hundred and sixty bucks. I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I would recommend an Ender three. Uh, it's a fine printer for people who love playing with printers. Yeah, uh. yeah. <laughs> I, I just love how often I watch a brand new FDM printer get announced, and the reviewer has already swapped out a part. <laughs> oh goodness yeah yeah i mean i'm I'm really glad uh that they're getting so much easier to use these days but what i'm talking about is when you first get your printers and you know a whole lot of people are getting printers these days especially with these sales i'm getting lots of emails this morning from friends like hey which printer should i get and basically you really run it like when suddenly miniatures and terrain go from costing you like a half a week's pay to pennies uh, uh, for a model, then you just want to print it all. Everything you've ever wanted an entire Warhammer army in the weekend is, is absolutely possible. Every dungeon tile that you want. I think in the description, I said enough to build under mountain at one to one scale. You can do that. Oh yeah. Oh, that sounds like a fun but it, and it is Why did way, you say that out loud? Oh no. Okay. It is way easy to get in over your head. Uh, like and, both of those this old is not <laughs> this is not a new problem for 3D printing um, because, you know, the pile of shame is something we've talked about on this podcast before how it's it's a lot easier to buy miniature products than it is to paint miniature products and to get them ready for the tabletop. Um and therefore, I know a lot of people who get it way in over their head with like a pile of printed armies, and I am no exception. Uh, I have a, I have drawers filled with bagged up 3D prints that I swear I'll get to someday. But so at least they're in drawers and bags, Param. Yeah, yeah, I had to do that. <laughs> when at first I was just putting all my prints on the table, like just lined up at, at, um, on one end of my game table, like just to get ready to paint them. And mm-hmm. then when I ran out of table, I knew I had a problem and I had mm-hmm. to buy some drawers. My problem was not to slow down printing, it was to uh, buy a place to put those prints. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Why would you stop printing? Yeah, so it's, it's very boat. easy. Yeah, it is very boat, easy. Because the printer works and you don't like if you're if you're hand crafting like if you're black magic crafting styrofoam terrain, you're 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 actually doing it. Um, and when you buy a box of minis from the store, that's your hard earned sixty dollars for them ten Space Marines. Uh, and yeah, that's how much a box of Space Marines costs these days. Yikes! Yikes! Um, well, I think a lot of us grew so, up like in in challenged moments of privilege at times, like. My dad, uh, after he lost his family business, he was bankrupt. And the idea of buying like gaming stuff as a kid was ridiculous and having cool minis and stuff. And there wasn't even that much out back then. But because there's this kind of built-in scarcity thing in my brain, Mm -hmm. now that it's so easy, it becomes very easy to like 
open the floodgates and overcompensate, you know, right. I'm going to have all the things I wanted as a kid and I can, and I can have them in mm-hmm. six different motifs and right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. really hard not to just get swept up in the enthusiasm. Right. And, and this can even happen before you print film. Like it is way too easy to just get swept up in, Oh, it's only going to be $10 to have these awesome lizard men. You know, I don't have a lizard man army, but I might one day. And these are really awesome. You know, Dragon Trapper's Lodge has got this Yoka Trappers mm-hmm. set that's got like a really cool printable Totoro that I would love to print someday. Do I have a need for a gigantic, huge size monster Totoro? Nah, I no, I don't. And, and not likely, likely to need it anytime soon. Maybe for a game or session of something, maybe. Unless you built it into a setting or tried to convert like a Totoro setting in a long term game, yeah, I can't even can't even right. think of it. But yeah, how many times have I had that moment of like, well, they have these new Artisan Guild has their new Mind Flayer set out, so I should go get the old one in case I need to use those modular. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the oh, justification yeah. is fast and furious. Right. So what do you do when you are? buried in resin when you have so many minis it becomes a, a, a intimidation to move forward what we do cry. you do we cry you you, you cry <laughs> you move no, on no we don't we get sad and get uh-huh. project paralysis mm-hmm. and we go print something else because it's really easy to set up another tray and just hit start and then you feel like you're doing something dopamine uh-huh. release right and then you don't have to worry about it for a while because you're processing and you can ignore the fact that you're putting your minis on paper plates. <sighs> yeah, uh, I said it out loud. <laughs> yeah. it's so that's the topic for today. What to do when you've printed too much and you have no place to put them anymore. The old projects are looming over your shoulder. The new projects are waiting in your print queue. You've bought all the files for all the things you might one day want to do. And if you've got any talk about this in chat, go ahead and go ahead and chat with us. We would love to hear from our audience during this one, especially. Yeah. I have recently been going through a whole lot of this myself. I know you have as well, Christian. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the basics. You've got a ton of minis that are taking up storage. You've got a ton of minis of projects you've half started. I think the very first thing you need to do is stop. Stop printing new project no never (laughs) i mean yes logically that's true but that's hard yeah don't start new projects until you've done an assessment it's like it because you're just adding to the problem you don't like there's been several prominent youtubers that have sworn off buying minis for a whole year etc until they can get their pile of shame down. I think the same applies here. I'm not the saying that YouTubers like that get free stuff sent to them during that year, so they're screwed. <laughs> and look at you, Midwinter. You <laughs> have actually th- they kept up with it fairly well, and, and yeah, Zorpazorp did Mid- okay with it yeah. too. I've definitely noticed that there are people that <laughs> that have a uh, like Go- Goober Town seems to get a lot of box sets. Yes, I like this idea. Lava being like this reminds me out on the cruise there was a girl who kept saying lava hill in her little thing anyway got to say it for the audience oh lava being says put them outside like garden gnomes but smaller yeah and you could even print there's uh like Tol- tolvior miniatures or tolvior I, I forget they do nothing but like super fantasy up garden gnomes and trolls and stuff and they look awesome and they even sell some prints of like them actually scaled up to two feet tall uh to be actual garden gnomes but with spear lines and casters and all the all the things you need for a gnome army we I mean, might need to link that in the show notes because i'm not that familiar with that one <laughs> yeah but, I, but honestly, I do think you do need to stop. I'm not saying stop permanently, but if you're just you're just going to add to the problem until you get it underhand, if you keep throwing new projects onto the pile. Um, I mean, once you've noticed that it's become a problem, do not perpetuate the problem. Just stop for a minute. And I decide, told you I needed this you episode. you really it, need to finish this project? <laughs> uh, I know. It really is. 
like and I, and th- that's where I was a few months ago. It's like I just like okay, printer. Just because like when you're first getting your printer and you're first getting established, it makes sense. You need to keep because you've got this big project in mind. It's going to take a whole lot of print runs. So you're used to just cycling the printer as often and quickly as possible. Get a print going in the morning. Get one going in the afternoon. Get one going in the evening. Make sure you've got one going overnight. Get that print done faster. Um, but you're not going to be able to process those anywhere near that speed. Um, if you've even a Mars can handle like six plus miniatures of print run easy, and I was easy. getting to where yeah. I was getting twelve on a print bed from from an old school Tetris Mars. master. I've seen <laughs> how you load those plates; it's stunning. Uh, and now it's like, uh, and, w- and with a mid range printer, which a lot of us upgrade to fairly quickly, getting the Saturns, getting the Mono X's, getting the big boys, uh, then good grief, an entire regiment of 20, 30 models at once. I managed to get 50 zombies on the plate once. Wow. Yeah. If I don't break at least like 12 to 15, I feel like I'm like wasting my time. Like, I, why didn't I get more on there? And I don't usually need, like, I'll print, you know me, I print like mind flayers. Very few people, I do do group encounters and mind flayers, but I'm, I run pretty hard at the table, but I don't need 15 of them. Right. But I print 15 of them. Oh, no. Why? And so, because yeah. I, I can't. Just, so just for the pause. Remember, the printer's not going to explode because you left it. You don't even have to empty the tank. I've had resin in the tank for weeks at a time between prints on some printers and just stirred it with my spatula, ready to go right away. No problems. If you do, It's not going to explode. It takes months for resin to expire, not weeks, not days. You can pause. I did run into some, though, late, lately. I want to say some I got December was did finally do the thing and those um were really really uh brittle and like crumbly even with tenacious mixed into it which i thought mm, would fix it, super weird yeah i think it something had happened now was this some of that discount resin you've been buying maybe <laughs> why you keep buying this discount <laughs> resin i do not know why you keep hey, buying this discount we, resin there was a really good any cubic sale recently so my next several prints are all going to be any cubic with a fresh mm. bottle tenacious they should be beautiful wonderful fantastic yeah, i do need to restock my tenacious bottle uh, yeah i just bought my second one finally it. yeah it took me quite a while the price has come down it used to be yes. a, uh, close to 100 now it's like just over 60 I think I got mine for 66. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cheap considering what it can do for you. And welcome to the chat, Alex. It's good to have you in the audience. It's almost not an episode without you here. Right? Seriously, it's true. <laughs> so once you've slowed down, you need to then make an assessment. Hey, are, do you, do you, are you really going to do this project or was it just something you started? Like, and, and there's no wrong answer here. Just decide which of these projects you are going to do. Map it out in your head. Decide, like, how much time this is really going to take. And also, like, maybe scale back the scope of the project. You don't, like, if it's, like, painting up all the minis you're going to need for this dungeon, they all don't need to be golden, demon-worthy paint quality. I mean, just basic tabletop quality is more than enough. Do you really need to have all the rooms of Undermountain on the table at once. You could just do a few pieces to do a room at a time or and, and, and just worry about what your players are actually going to see that session. And the second that you ha- do commit, I'm only going to put out these three rooms. Then they'll like go back to an old section. It's just fate. But yeah, <laughs> take pictures. Also, if you're doing modular tiles, take pictures so that you know what you used the session before. If you need to rebuild it really quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, and then if you aren't going to continue to pump those out and you and you've and you've decided that this isn't a project, you can move forward. You can you can get rid of them. Remember, these minis, we are used uh we are used to these minis. See here, like you know, this is this this little sci-fi dude here. We're used to him being like six dollars minimum from like even a cheap one. Maybe it's a bones and it's like a four dollar mini or something. But Maybe you said your average was fifty four cents, right? For for mini on a that was for a big old boy space marine. This this little guy here is right. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. guy here is like less than a dime. Yeah. He's just a tiny little skinny 
tiny little skinny sci-fi dude oh, with the thing. And, like, and he, he is nothing. He is nothing. You didn't just throw him on the floor, did you really? Yeah, I smashed him into a thousand pieces. Actually, oh. he's pretty t- tenacious, so he just came off his base. He needs otherwise fine. Huh. <laughs> did you break the, break the ankles? Because sometimes that's bad. He broke one ankle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. But he's worthless. He's, he, he cost me pennies. So uh, he... <laughs> He doesn't Sorry. matter. He and three like hours that. from now, he can exist again. You've, You've got, got CEO the... potential, Param. You've got CEO potential. You've got the toy that makes infinite toys at your disposal. Remember, it only took three hours to bring these into existence. 20 at a time. And barely any... The storage space in your house is worth more than it takes to run a print off of them if they're unpainted. I don't even consider them worth anything i consider them completely worthless things until paint has touched them true titan troll oh no says it costs pennies until your dog eats it and then it costs a bit more yeah yeah that is a very please to keep the dogs away from resin keep dogs and yeah and uh you know i have kitties that just love supports if they can find them they'll fish them out of the garbage Mm -hmm. yeah say and alex says wait you need to print it all at once. Uh, but Param, Kingmaker for PF2 is out. It's way back from the printer now. I need to print the whole kingdom. Hey, by the way, I did some writing for Kingmaker for PF2. So uh, hope you like it. Yay. James comes out. Ask your friends if they want them. Yes, absolutely. You can, like, there's not everybody has the magic machine that makes all the toys we want. And in fact, something you could do if you want to keep the print edge going is start printing stuff for your friends. Like, you know, print they, they can buy the files and for the things they want to print and you can print it out for them. And because that printer's not burning all the time. If they are, you're going to literally be drowning in this. Um, what if you don't have friends? <laughs> then why are you playing? OK, that's a good point, Tire, uh, t- Titan Troll. Um, if you don't have friends, this becomes difficult. I wonder what you're printing all these for besides painting. If you're like just a crafty hobbyist, if you don't have friends to play these games, they're with. Etsy store, probably, right? Is that what I mean, if you've got a commercial license, then this is a self solving problem here. You just, just, just sell get the it commercial all. license and sell them off. That is one of the options. Um, so the other thing you can do is, yeah, you see if a friend wants them. But I will say, make sure the friend wants them. Don't just show up to your gamer friends and say, here's 300 dragons. Uh, Because giving somebody unpainted, unassembled minis is like giving them a book. Some people consider it homework. Sure, sure. Well, and I know, like, you know, uh, there is something to be said for we care about free things sometimes less. So, like, you give someone a fragile mini that's like, you know cool and all and you know it's got its beautiful angel wings here but these are angel wings and it's very easy to knock them off because this mm-hmm. was a pretty tenacious print i think and you know i give that to my friend who's like oh it's free cool and like maybe displays it on their shelf or something but they have a cat and then it's on the floor and it's in the zillion pieces and the cat swallowed its wing is joking on you yeah please keep the prints away from the cats and the dogs and stuff like that yeah don't don't give your dogs resin Please do not give animals resin. That's, I think, another reason you, you know to get a, a dedicated space, maybe, for that. Are we moving also, to that some, yet? <laughs> some of the other thing that can lead to this problem is the ever cooler release cycle. You oh, printed yeah. out, like three years ago, you printed out, oh, this is one that happened to me. I'm finally getting around to it's time to me to start my new army. We talked about it on the epi- last episode. And I was like, what's it going to be? Orcs or lizard men? And you talked me into lizard men. And I looked over and I saw all these lizard men that I'd printed two, three years ago when I was going to make me a nice big old salamander army for Kings of War. And, you know, I'm not happy with them. They're all pretty tenacious. And so it's a very particular style. So, like, I thankfully I had somebody that wanted them. So they got a big old giant pile of dragon folk. And, uh, and I have recently went and pre-printed uh like basically just got rid of all of them what ones they didn't want hit the trash can because again they are pennies on the dollars the magnets i put in their bases were worth more than the models themselves <laughs> that's funny yeah i've i've gone out of my way to when i'm throwing away old prints to like harvest the magnets first and then throw them away um sometimes i can't be bothered 
And then I printed off a whole new bunch of lizard men because I'm now actually ready to start a new project. So now I have printed just the ones I'm going to paint. <laughs> I didn't print the entire army at once. I printed well, one unit of What if you want stuff from a different, gun. you know, like a, a variable list? Like, you know, you're, what, do you know what points you're going to be playing? You might need an extra 4,000. I mean, sure. I don't print the whole <laughs> army at once, people. Just like you don't go buy the whole army at once. So, you know, really, I went, really these rich. are the one page rules, lizard men, um, because they look cool and they're going to be easy to paint. And also, I work for them, so I need to bang that drum a little bit. Uh, well, their war da daemons look amazing. They, Speaking of I you working, you. he did an awesome video. You should check it out. And if you like them, you should support one page rules. But we're not, we're not sponsored. So, I, but we both have work for them. So. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, so I've got I just printed out one unit, the core unit. These are just Saurian warriors with hand weapons, the most basic unit. I know I'm going to need it in any army I play. I'm going to start there, and then when they're done, I'll print the next one. And when are you going to print the blowgun done, gecko I'll... guys? I Actually, want a yeah. whole yeah. sea of blowgun. The chameleon yeah. one specifically. Yeah. I, want I guess they're chameleons. The... That's right. They do have yeah. like, like the like um, yeah. little mud wobbly yeah. eye things. Yeah. And I'm going to print the T-Rex because that's the entire reason I'm playing this freaking army to begin with so that I can put a dinosaur riding a dinosaur on the table. That's <laughs> Don't you already do. have like a, a big DW dino thing too that was really cool? Uh, it's Raven Twins. I, it's oh. uh, Raven Twins. I don't, okay. I, not a GW one. Well, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm not throwing that away. It's It's already painted. Therefore, it has value. Like it has my time and sweat and tears put into it. So it does takes. it seed enough of a paint scheme that you can then kind of build your army to like vibe with it? I mean, it's mostly just generic green dinosaur, so okay. it, it works. <laughs> it works with anything. I did um, when I did my snakey boys. I I googled and there was a list of the ten most beautiful snakes in the world, and I tried Aww. to make them based on that. And so they're all different mm -hmm. colors. They're you know me, I like I like things super colorful and weird. So I, they were all based on these really beautiful coral snakes and things that are like all shimmery and then I couldn't paint them nearly that well, but they, the, the inspiration was there. Right. So once you've established which projects you really want and be realistic with yourself, are you ever going to paint the, all of those? Are you ever going to assemble that dungeon? Or, and then like also understand that there are some shortcuts that I'll get into in a minute, but before that, Decide which projects you're going to keep doing and be more realistic about that. You don't need to print the whole army at once. You don't need to buy every single possible file that might one day be a lizard man in your lizard man army or <laughs> this cool thing. And the other thing is like, you know, new files come out all the time and they're awesome. And you maybe you printed out a whole bunch of stuff from two years ago from Dan Kelly for your for your weird human Final Fantasy thing. And, and now there's new, better Final Fantasy looking stuff out today. Well, those are worthless now. So they all went in the trash can. <laughs> Buy everything. Titan <laughs> Titan Troll. You know, consider buying Titan Troll stuff. I'm just, <laughs> uh, but like, seriously, don't over pledge. Don't over, don't over buy. Don't over commit. Uh, you don't need to spend money until you're actually ready to do the thing. And you don't need to print stuff. Even if you are buying files for later, those hard drive space is cheap. You can store those forever. Um, actual physical space, less so. And resin's brittle, so it's a little bit difficult to store those than most. I'm about to cross over the halfway mark of my five terabyte drive. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, this is why I'm glad that everything's on my mini factory now. I just leave it there until I'm ready to print it. I don't. Well, yeah, that, a lot of that's just it. the stuff I downloaded that I was scared that it wasn't on there or the Patreon seems like I, we we have a Patreon acquaintance that, that that has given up on updating their mini factory because apparently mm -hmm. it's difficult for them. And I was just like, ah, because then you know you have to download their things. And I think it was one of those ones that I got like a fifty dollar bargain annual or something to it. And I have like seven more months of having oh. to manually download them and that's driving me nuts. Yeah. I'm gonna give some uh, tough love on this one, gang. Oh. If you are a miniature creator and your stuff isn't on my mini factory, you're automatically that's a barrier for a lot of people to get started. To, to even want to buy your stuff. Um if you're big enough and you've got your own website and it's awesome and 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 stuff, that's almost as good as being on my mini factory. Now, 
I do. I like the fact that there's one central repository marketplace that seems to be in control of the whole market. No, but do I also want to have to keep track of 15 different passwords and accounts and hope that they'll still be there in three years when there's one industry standard place that we all seem to have agreed to use? No. Yeah. Yeah. So seriously, if you are not on my mini factory, I'm not saying it has to be your only option, but if it's not an option, um, reconsider your strategic choices. I'll even go so far as to say if you're doing a Patreon and you're not pushing your releases to my mini factory too, just... yeah. Uh, anyway. There's a grand total of one of those left that I still pledge to. Yeah. And, I have. and it is it is every month I'm like, is it is this the month it's too far? Is this yeah. the month that I almost missed it and I'm not going to keep supporting on this month? Yeah. Titan Troll says... They ha and I've seen this before. I have a patron who has a the whole 600 plus release collection, and he doesn't think he's ever printed them. Subbed for three years, doesn't want to miss out. Yeah, FOMO is real. You know, it's mm -hmm. a thing, and it's rough because mm -hmm. also, it, like you know, like I think of Heroes Infinite, and you miss a Heroes Infinite release at you know oh 10 or 16 it's bucks, like 120 bucks. Yeah, you are sale. going to be donating bone marrow to try to get the money to buy those things. I mean, you're you're moving into a horror's heresy range. It's like half a horror's heresy range to buy some of those sets. I understand that miniature files meant probably under are underpriced generic universally, but there's like I mean, for me right around the $40 mark it, for a Patreon month uh, is is a is a ouch enough more than that, and I'm just not even interested. It's like, oh, it's priced me out. Forty works for me if they have frequent, like a Patreon get patrons get um you know a discount. I'll, I'll work mm -hmm. with that sometimes, or just wait for a Christmas sale. Otherwise, <laughs> because like, yeah, it gets those things add up. Like mm -hmm. if you're if you're going back, especially back, since we're not printing half the stuff we buy, right, right. You, honest, you, honest. You, well, I I frequently will get a ten dollar Patreon sub because. You know, I want the cool hippo gift guy or whatever it is for for a game. And then mm -hmm. because I look at the their backlog and I'm like, well, it costs that much to buy him freestanding mm -hmm. or, or maybe that is half a legit much. option. Yeah. And so, like, it's really hard when you know you want the one thing out of the release and it's, you know, it's as much month later for the one mini mm -hmm. or half that, even if there's too many, it's it becomes easy to justify digital overbuying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I basically for me, uh, for your typical $10 Patreon, I'm like, are there two things I'll print in this month? Then yep. it's worth it. And then I'm happy. I'm not I don't feel bad that I wasted uh, two things or, or multiple poses on something I want because multiple poses can become a unit. Oh, yeah, a whole unit. Yeah, if I, pretty fast. There, there's a whole Patreons I support that just do like they they have like it's like kind of like puppets were, you know, they yep. have multiple factions they support every month. And I'm only interested in some of them. And therefore, as long as that one gets hit, I'll be happy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alex says Kickstarter. He, yeah, yeah. Kickstarter is its own little rabbit hole. I, I have bought multiple full town sets. And uh, I have not printed nearly enough of those. Yeah, yeah, and and the time, both that's a commitment. Yeah, FDM print takes so much longer. What blows me away sometimes, though, you'll see a Kickstarter, and you're like, "That's really cool," but it's really only about three Patreon releases, or maybe even one sometimes. <laughs> and if it's like pay what you want or a really reasonably priced one, I think um, mm -hmm. Sync Ratio and, and like or or um, Hidden Places, they had really recent reasonable buy-ins mm -hmm. like that that were closer to a patreon release and if that's their model that's fine because then they don't get burnout and i know a lot of people who do that like i'm going to do a patreon size release on kickstarter for 10 to 15 bucks and then they can take a month off if they need to because maybe their their workflow doesn't allow them to do that and i totally understand that but mm -hmm. yeah sometimes kickstarters I, we talk about a lot it's, you got to really make sure it's worth it mm -hmm. yeah <sighs> so let's talk some cheats Cheats. And there's, first, there's no such thing as cheating and and miniature painting and printing and crafting and game crafting, whatever is on the table. So first is first. There's absolutely nothing wrong with just slapping a bunch of speed paints on the model and calling it done. Sure. That's, that's why speed paints exist. It still looks great. Your players won't complain if they do get new players. <laughs> uh, well, uh, even... and like, unless you're competing in a contest 
the only person you need to worry about is yourself. Yep. And it's okay if not every single one of the hundred things you slap on the table is ready to win a contest. Yeah, but Zenithal Prime, the seed speed paint, you look better than 99% of the pre-paint minis you could buy out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck, just speed paint over white looks better than most. Like, I mean, I've bought some D&D minis where it is, they don't even have a shade step. It's just one solid color of green next to one solid color of brown. Yeah. Sad pan. I've talked about whiz kids. They can't even get the face on the right side of the head sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes it depends. The weird thing about whiz kids is like it's so variable. I've had some sets for the same line. Mm-hmm. Great month, you know, great release. And then three months later, the next quarter, just like it looks like it's just been like smeared across a sponge. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you can look at like some of those old hero clicks and stuff that like just look god awful and going for like hundreds of dollars on the secondary market just because oh, yeah. that's how that that market works i don't remember what they're your, called, like your salami. paint job is fine your paint job is good secondly you don't have time for that here's another way to get stuff done in a hurry okay first i recommend zenithal priming so yeah throw down a dark color put a light color over top of it i often like the the classic is just do uh black and white Black and white. That's all you need to worry about. And so, so you just get the natural shade. And you don't even have to do that. White itself. Then slap one color that's thematic of speed paint over the whole dang model. And you get a nice looking pawn that, you know, has got some amount of degree. It's just, and like how many board games are like that? Hero Quest. All the characters are one color. All the monsters are another color. Yeah, like yeah, Hero Quest, Wrath of the Shardalon. Yeah, and we play those games all the time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. We have fun. The skeleton's white. The orc is green. I'm good. It looks awesome. It makes my eye twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I want them painted. <laughs> all right, so you can do that. I've done that for an entire armies. Like my my sister's first wood elf army. We did the entire army like that we just zenithal prime them slapped gr- like hunter green homemade speed paint over every single one of them it looked awesome it looked like the minis gandalf would play with in medieval times it was like these look like they were wood carvings that were just hand painted and that looked mm-hmm. awesome just a really cool theme to them and that was fun it looks great it took me maybe an hour to do a hundred minis that way it was not a problem one giant freaking bush heck i was even toying around with a mason jar made up a whole mason jar worth of the stuff and just dipped them in and done yeah 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 james says says there's no police for it sorry he says no police for it uh that look if your friends look that close hand them one of your extra figs and a brush and say go ahead right awesome thing about the pawn step is it's a great first start then like i've taken those same elves and then just painted on details after the fact and they look like awesome minis at that point just like and put the fresh tone on the face and the things brown wash that up highlight Mm -hmm. that up done like it's not even wasting time you've got a good start and it's playable right the frig now and use it if you just take Another option, if you don't even want to do that much effort, go to your your store that has spray paints. Like it used to be spray paints that were primers, the two Rustolium two in ones or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, were not available in a lot of different colors. And you had to do things like buy Army Painter to get colored spray paint, which is still uh, sort of affordable. They're pretty cheap. Yeah, but so so for like cheap. four dollars, you can get spray paints in all sorts of colors and i've got a ton of those here before i got my airbrush um i've still got so many of them here left over be careful don't let one accidentally roll out your door and under your car wheel or else you end up with a blue panel on your car personal experience yeah (laughs) i haven't done that one yet that stuff don't come off Um, (laughs) um you can you can ask james about it um there might have been a priming incident with some purple mm-hmm. on our front stoop. And there is right. maybe a purple square outline on the cement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just take two different colors of spray paint and like a uh, spray, uh, spray paint and put those on your minis like you would a Zenithal, but mm-hmm. make it themed. Like for some orcs, I did dark brown and then a mid green Zenithal. It looks cool. It, that it, and a wash it, and they look great. 
Yeah, you don't even need the wash. The wash is the next step, and it may even looks great. And it's a great base coat for when you want to, if you want to do them later. You can even lie to yourself and say, I'm just doing them all 100 orcs like this. I'll get to them later. Just like you have while they've been sitting unpainted on that shelf for the past two years. And now they'll sit green on that shelf and usable in games and looking awesome. And just doing that is already 100 steps up from leaving it blank. I was just reading the um, having a massive STL collection to mo magic up sh models on a short notice. Totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. Although, uh, see, Catlet, Catlet, Catlet looks like to me. Um, if you have a good file organizational structure, I'd love to hear your your take on it because the bits and stuff. Because you get like a release and it's cast mm -hmm. in play, but maybe you just like when you get your release, you look at it and like there's that swirly thing with the glowing orb on it, and I really wanted that. But I couldn't remember what set <laughs> this it was is that in. orb thing again. <laughs> yes. Well, oh. we were talking about um, Greedleys and 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 dungeon mm -hmm. dressing, and um, I ran into a situation for my Monday game, uh, mm -hmm. which unfortunately got canceled later because of health reasons. But I was getting ready for it, and um, mm -hmm. I, I realized that uh, I needed this thing. I needed for a teleport situation, like a teleport puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I needed multicolored orbs. And I was like, this will be so easy to 3D print it. But it certainly wasn't easy to find that file. <laughs> so I end up, and I don't know, see, Catlet has a better thing than this. I often use my mini factory to search for the item like I was going to buy it again. And I'm like, okay, I know what the file's name is <laughs> now. And I'll go I back do that all, the, all time. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Alex does bring up a point. Games Workshop will not let you play in a tournament with less than three colors in the base material on minis. How? Games Workshop, I don't care about their tournaments. I'm going to play with my friends. And yeah. yeah, if you're going to a tournament and it's got a qualification, you've got to do the extra work. Uh, some Kings of War tournaments score on painting. And if I'm going to go to a big national, yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of extra work into that project. But nine times out of ten, I don't need to worry about that. Yeah. And also, three colors, that's real easy to achieve. <laughs> yeah. If all you care about is three colors, you know, do the two color just, prime, slap yeah. brown on the belt, make the eyes green, you're good. Yeah. If, the, if they were red, you just did blood angels. You could probably even do two color prime, one color dry brush. That's just, another yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Base material, uh, 3D printed bases, uh, <laughs> slap some contrast on that, you're done. I'm so glad Titan trolls in our chat so often lately because that is <laughs> yeah. beautiful. You mean Goblin Sparrow 4 out of the pack of 15 isn't descriptive enough? Hell oh. no, it's not. Oh, oh, you it's already a thousand times better that in the file structure it's called Goblin Spear 04. As I don't know how many Goblin puzzles 04. I've opened. That is just no no. It's it's in the goblin pack and it's 04.stl, 05.stl. Mm -hmm. And like one Absolutely. of them's an arm and the other one's a sword. It's not yeah. even the whole model. It's modular, and there's like 17, and it just has the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I've run into that quite a few times, yeah. too. And this is why the, the 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 digital thing is a separate topic. We we kind of already covered that topic. We're talking about you're drowning in actual minis, and you're, and you're yep, committed yep. to these projects. First, you can change your mind. You Past you decided this was a great idea does not mean that current you has to agree with them. Yeah, it's very, very true. It's like your yep. what else. Oh, yeah. Got the replaced wood by elves. a better release later from Titanforge, maybe? Yeah, Titanforge Wood Elves. For red leaves? Red, 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 yeah, elves. the Red Leaf Wood Elves. Re really, really cool. Um, So, yeah, you got them painted. You did your two-color scheme. What's your next Your next go? What, what's your next idea? Okay, well, honestly, I passed that point. You can just remember that resin comes in a bunch of different colors, and that's another way you can just... Uh, you know, maybe just buy red resin when you're going to be painting your demons up and, and don't even worry about painting them. Just print a whole bunch of red demons. Sure. And leave them red. That. Probably. I, I don't know that I can. I don't know if I can do it. Let's see it. The so sculpts there's, are there's, really cool. There's just whole different levels of options here. It would be interesting if you, if you just printed a red one like that and then just under sprayed it with like black for shadowing. Like a reverse Zenithal. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that would look like. I bet it looked pretty good. Maybe it's time you go test it. 
I might. I, yeah. I certainly have. I'm like staring as we're talking about this topic. I'm staring at these. Mm-hmm. I got these horrible, horrible bins from. Um, they were Christmas sale where I thought they were mm-hmm. cool because they were kind of beveled and, and they and they stacked really nicely in threes. And then when you get the, the next one, you can stack it on top of the thing. So I was like, oh, I could buy like a gazillion of these. They're on clearance, and and I thought it was going to be the best solution. Uh, yeah, they're quick release. So if you pick them up the wrong way, they, the bottom two things just drop off and shatter every wow. unit that's in them. Yeah. I've got drawers of bad decisions here that I'm I'm actively. Con- oh no! Hey, hey, just preparing for this, I've taken whole bags out of this and just tossed them straight in the trash. Oh my goodness! Uh, just so you're aware, you seem to be running into a little bit of connection difficulty. So, no! sound wise, hopefully it's just a flicker. Mm-hmm. I'm paranoid after that one <laughs> one night. Yeah. All right. So, is there anything more you can add to this topic, Kristen? Anything more I would add to this topic? Um, I mean, yeah, I think project planning from the beginning is is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing what you're getting on there and being realistic about what, what you're going to need. Pri- probably, for me, I usually... Here's the thing. Know whether or not you're planning on using this thing for wargaming first mm-hmm. because you're going to print a very different thing when you print wargaming. And if you're mm-hmm. like me and play both things, then, you know, like... Um, I have those mm-hmm. chaosy looking minis I got. I think they're Broken Anvil. And um, I printed them up to have a squad if I ever got to play Age of Fantasy or whatever. Because I wanted some Havoc. Havoc Brothers, I think they call or something. Anyway, Havoc people. Havoc Demon people. I, I printed those up, but I can also use them as Black Blades in my D&D thing. But if I was going for D&D first, or you know Pathfinder first, I wouldn't plan that way, right? I would probably try to get the entire Dungeons and Counters, or what I thought I could actually get printed and painted before that night. I'm moving more in that direction because yeah, you just, it's going to reduce, you know, I, mm-hmm. I still do two of every mini. I know that sounds bad, I mean, but just so you some, don't break for breakage protection. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And so I would definitely so you recommend paint one and throw the other in the trash yeah, when or, it's done or you keep it anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, like, especially like if it's got a chain weapon or a spear or a fiddly bit. Yeah. Yeah. You got to print a couple extra. So I would still say do that, but but don't print, print 15 of them. <laughs> yeah. Just because you printed it doesn't mean you're married to it. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And it also, yeah. like, you know, if you get those, I have stuff that looks really neat that, that are semi fails or, or whatever. And you can break those up and use them on train basing and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like consider that. But again, don't move into hoarder territory, which I am dangerously yeah. near. Uh, other things I would do, though, um, honestly assess whether or not you're going to get to play it. That's what, probably the biggest thing for me. Like, I would have four more war, war gaming armies probably usable for Age of Fantasy or Grimdark if I thought I'd actually played them more re- you know, mm-hmm. more regularly. Um, but I would definitely say commit to a storage solution. I'm still working on my best one. I still like your sliding one with the magnets. Um, mm-hmm. And have the stuff ordered, have it all. If you have it all, like when you're ready to go and you have the energy, tonight's the organizational night, like mm-hmm. you don't want to be like, oh crap, I guess I need to overnight from Amazon or I need to do whatever to get those magnets or or take a trip to you know Har- Harbor Freight or whatever your your store is for that kind of stuff to have everything like assembled beforehand. Because if you're like me, like I don't, I don't always have a surplus of executive function in my brain and, <laughs> and I need to like, have it easy to go because when you get there, you need to do it and get it done. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that's enough on the topic. So let's start talking about news items. News items. Okay. Uh, so the big, this is a complicated news story because it's it's breaking out. It's 3D printed oriented. And I really don't like the person it's about. Um, so is Games Workshop coming for our all our files, Kristen? Are they going to shut down 3D printing? I have been stunned every time I'm like, wow, that looks really close. And someone's like, oh, GW talked to us already, and that file's approved. They don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that is a Tyranid Warrior. It is totally a Tyranid Warrior. And I'm like, but seems like it's okay, and GW says it's okay. So, right. I mean, you look at some things like from Dark Age Designs, where they've communicated with GW specifically about the specific aspects of their Space Knight Warriors, and they're totally not a uh, Rhino tank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And 
you know, that's all cool. And you look at stuff like Titan Forge is doing. We're like, these are obviously meant to be proxies. Like after Chapter House, there's so many proxies. Like, and and why it's obvious because Games Workshop's the most popular game in the hobby. So of course people want to print stuff to play the most popular game in the hobby. Um, and yeah, they're not they're not chasing people. Like it's it's like the really blatant stuff that gets hit, and um, and then like. Like the big thing that happened this uh, this week that's brought all this out into the news cycle has been Gamza, which fair warning content, like he's had problematic stuff. I'll, I do not, rec I, like I cannot endorse, do not recommend to go watch Gamza's content. I cannot support Gamza um, because of various terrible things they've said uh, and, and on online. And, you know, uh, but I, uh, they had been doing a Patreon and they've kind of been very anti GW in their videos lately, promoting 3d printing as an alternative. And, um, they were even on their Patreon releasing files to play the games with. Um, I wasn't super impressed with the quality of these files to begin with. And evidently they've gotten the, 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 the they gotten copyright striked according to them. Patreon has, required that they take some of these files down he did a video comparing the files that he was doing in gw and boy they did look so really close in my opinion that was very close um but i've seen some stuff that's cl as close before that that has been okay so i don't know what the situation there is but gw is not coming for our files somebody flew a little too close to the sun and gams has been poking the bear on purpose antagonizing gw um, I think that I don't know if that played into it, but I would not be surprised if it did. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, yeah, it's a situation that is, is crazy. So they, they've had files taken off every so often you hear about like a bunch of files being taken offline because like from the fan community, which are just like one-to-one -one representatives of the models. Like the, some of the fans tried to make stuff as close to accurate as possible for like the free files. But when you look at the professional stuff out there, they usually go through the effort to like, you know, similar but legally distinct from Space Marines. Right, right. And similar but legally distinct from Necrons and stuff. Do we know and if people's pre-purchase files got deleted? Or is that not, not clear? This was a Patreon thing. I think they were hosted on his Patreon. Those posts were okay. taken down. He then later released all the files for free on a Colts page, but I don't mm -hmm. know if those are still up because you really don't want to poke the bear that hard. Um, I mean, if uh, so that's an interesting situation. But honestly, like, there's so many of these people, like, Puppets War has been making models forever and ever and ever and their strikers are my favorite things to use as yeah, space green really cool. proxies they look really awesome cool. um there's a reason i picked them for the thumbnail today uh and they look awesome i love them to pieces um you know titan forge has been releasing proxies for just about everything going and it's real obvious what they're proxies for but they're unique sculpts and 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 they don't fly too close to the sun. and titan forge doesn't release videos talking about how terrible gw is every week so I, I'm not super worried there. And we've talked with people that know people in GW legal that have had conversations, have had GW contact them, say, Hey, this is too close to, this is too much. You need to change, make some changes right, here. Right. They've made the adjustments like uh, the wrath of the, uh, the Wraith King army up 3d printing Kickstarter had to be taken down. Uh, they met, they talked with GW. They made some, fairly minor changes and then re-uploaded the project and it mm -hmm. went through. I pledged on it and everything was great. Yeah, GW like... ain't out there trying to take down all the stuff. The, the The days of that have long since passed since the chapter house lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it's a lot like the same situation with 5e and people trying to control that market, which I don't, I don't think Wizards could hire enough lawyers for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not much to add. No, not really. I mean, I, I, like I said, mostly I'm stunned how close people can get there. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I have had no, especially stuff I've been interested in. I usually want something unusual. So like, I'll get like, I, I like Patreons that have, um, I don't know if you've ever seen fantastical sculpts. 
but they do they have some a faction i think they're calling paladins right now mm-hmm. that are that are really just different enough as space marines to like really kind of pop same thing like puppets war uh, but mm-hmm. they're like their oni themes or their right. you know root their orky themes but um yeah i, I don't I don't usually run into this too much because I'm not looking for one-to-one proxies. I wouldn't, I don't know. Honestly, if I just wanted a single GW army and wanted it to be good, I could probably pay for that with legit instead of doing all the 3D printing stuff. I want to get into fiddly bits and make the cool weird things. So I don't run into it a lot, but yeah. And honestly, like the, the fan stuff that's one-to-one is one thing. It doesn't bother me too much. The stuff that like the, the chart people charging for stuff, I like, I, if I'm going to pay for files, I want it to be an original piece of art. I want it to be uh, awesome. I want it to be really cool. Um, and, you know, that's why I like the Titan uh, Forge stuff, because it's a spin. That's why I like Puppets War stuff. It's a spin. I like that they didn't just, like, I like the weird pirate-themed halfling blood bowl armies that are out there. That's real cool. I like people doing original takes on things mm-hmm. and, and showing us their, their own art. And it really just grows the hobby in general. Um, just one-to-one copying the pose and everything from a GW model. I'm just not even interested. I'll just, if I want that, I'll go buy the GW model. Right. Right. Save yourself some time printing too. But right. Yeah, and and big, bankrupt yourself probably the same time. Yeah. When I want Techless to be riding a giant arcane phoenix instead of a weird sphinx thing, I'll I'll go and get Heroes Infinite's version. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really a cool, cool scope. Mm-hmm. What else you got in the news? Well, you had a printer that you wanted to do. I do. I do. What's this um, thing? Why do, why do we care about a new printer? Okay, let me... It's the We Do... It actually is so early, it's like official market name's not out. It's an FDM printer, so like, you know, good on me finally for you getting a little little more into the FDM stuff. It's called We Do ME4 Single Extruder Large Format Printer right now. It's on it's on uh, Early Bird on Kickstarter right now. You save three hundred bucks off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, you know, I'm currently using a Mega X in a cubic and, and working through my my fears of FDM. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the yeah, uh, Ben, you asked We Do. Yes, it is. It's a We Do. We use the brand. This is not their first thing. Uh, they have a history of delivering. So mm-hmm. not super scary. But it has a lot of the features we liked on the Neptune when we were talking about them. Uh, automatic okay. bed leveling. Um, you know, doesn't, I don't think it has a camera maybe, but it, it has open source stuff. It's, it's going to work with a lot of stuff. It's going to be really good. But its most unusual thing that I saw was that it has a 300 degree heatable hot end. So the filament range of what you can do with it is much broader. Um, I, I saw some videos about printing nylon with it. Oh Maybe. boy, I do not like printing nylon. That's just been pain anytime I've tried it. Right, right. And this is supposed to handle it quite well. Um, and then I saw some stuff about building uh, really hard structural plastic for like um, aviation and, and uh, uh, mini rockets and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's going to expand some ranges of what you can do. And I bet you could make some really high tensile strength terrain and stuff. Right. I mean, um, I'm mostly happy with PLA. It's it's a great material for gaming models, and I don't really yeah. see myself. And I absolutely agree. Like, from it. I would say right now, because of the early bird pricing, it's tempting to me. But I already just ordered the Neptune, so I'm probably not gonna not gonna sink anything on this. And by the time I get off my waffling, it'll be back up to closer. Its retail price mm-hmm. is like six hundred and twenty nine or something, so right. it's up there. But it's quite large 300, 300, uh, 400. So it's a big bed, um, and auto leveling on a big bed is really cool. I like that. So I you might like want to check it out. Mm-hmm. You might want to check it out. Um, I think it's a good value on the early bird, but other than that, um, probably not going to pull the trigger myself. Okay. Yeah. Money. Right. All right, everyone. That is going to be bringing. Oh, oh. oh, I have a shout out. Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out. Yeah, What's shout out. out? Uh, actually, two shout outs. Two. Okay. Two of them. Let me shout now uh, too. First shout out, uh, last week when we were talking about nautical stuff and ships, we mentioned Arcane Minis. Right. They have, and I, I mentioned that they went into hibernation mode on Patreon. It right. stopped this end of this month. They're going to release a new set. It's supposed to be like super, super awesome. Uh, we talked on, I talked to the the, the team and, and hopefully 
we're going to get them on the show to talk about it. But um, they really wanted to relaunch with a really, uh, I think it's a strong 5e RPG focus. Um, but, you know, again, we talked about their cool airships. They said at least 15 models per release, pretty reasonably priced. Um, mm-hmm. Comes with a really well high production value module and, and source book every month for, uh, I think, 5e Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so, yeah. It's super good value. I've really liked their minis in the past. Uh, they do good flavored sets. We showed some of their ships off last week. Um, and yeah, I'm super, super hyped that they're coming back. Um, and uh, speaking of ships, we've been talking uh, about Spelljammer. Spelljammer just released their Spelljammer Academy intro product, which gives you like mm-hmm. a lot of the species and, and, and kind of basic intro to the set thing. And Twin Goddess is releasing in August a massive spell jammer set that has like multiple oozlings Ooh. and it's going to have some multiple thread queens, like a, a rose orchid. There was a the, back in dark sun. There was like these like mysterious, like flower, like praying mantis ones. Like if you, if you Google praying mantises, there's a whole bunch of them that actually look like blossoms and they're going to be that themed for their praying mantis thread queen stuff. So super excited about that. Adam's awesome. And he does awesome sculpts and yeah, tons of oozlings already. Um, so there's that. Uh, yeah, um, I missed a couple things. I think Lost World had a pirate set also this month that I missed. But anyway, mm-hmm. in the last episode. But yeah, those were the two I want to make sure. Uh, check out the Arcane Minis Patreon and then um, Twin Goddess next month for Spell Jam. I want to sh- I want to shout out to Dungeon Shadow, who has recently made a change in their Patreon. Oh. I've seen a lot of people do lately, especially a lot of these solo artist Patreons, uh-huh. where he is... He is Knock the Patreon down to five dollars a month instead of ten, which was the traditional normal mm-hmm. price for Patreon. Uh, the model count is going down. Is going to do yeah. a select group of models each month instead of trying to do the billion models all, every month option. And honestly, I am getting more and more attracted to the five dollar boutique groups. Uh, these days Mm -hmm. because i can justify five dollars tossed to a creator and even if i don't even if i don't use anything from that set that month i'm not going to feel guilty about it like this month right now it is a modular halfling soldier set which you know is awesome uh you know i'm gonna like that you like Uh, the halflings three halfling heroes a wizard a barbarian and a cleric a weird owl person wizard priest or something a giant zombie frog and a giant zombie bear. Yeah. And that is a great amount of models for five bucks. If I yeah. printed one of those Decent. models, it was worth the five bucks. I, I, uh, I think I've seen a couple others. And, and it's interesting, too, to see a, like a lot of Patreons that I follow have actually said, you know what? We understand things are hard right now. We're mm-hmm. dropping our Patreon down by two bucks or whatever. Like, And I, right. I thought that was such an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. And it seems so anti the normal, you know, line right now because there's mm-hmm. a lot of companies out there during this whole thing with you know pandemic or whatever and wars that are actually still elevating their prices even if they don't need to. And it's cool to see these creators kind of like, you know, helping either by or or you know saving their own well being, right? Like either thing mm-hmm. by like kind of adjusting, um, you know. And it's great, like. I don't get me wrong. I still love me an OPR release. I still love me and my Epic releases, mm-hmm. but if you yeah. can't do that, you can't do that. It's the same thing. Like I'm an indie RPG person. I don't have the team to release, you know, like a massive high production value thing every month. I couldn't do it. Could not do right. it. And I don't think, you know, a lot of these people can, but they try and it's coming out of their health. So, right. And like next month, they're doing this really awesome fox folk set. Duncan oh. Shadow is, and oh. it looks cool. They've got. I like that one of the foxes is just like doing a black face with its tongue sticking out. It's like, oh, of course, it knows the market. I think the we know somebody fans would like will this. love this set. <laughs> yes, yeah, Dustin Knight is already begging me to send this a set of this to. to I'll him. say and Dustin that, and Alex. It is in the mail. That is in the mail. <laughs> yeah, and Alex, of course. I haven't shown it to Alex. Yet. I. I've already sent Alex a Fox care package. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so like they did that monstrous encounters recently did the same thing. Uh, I've like several others are, are adopting this model and yeah, the solo creator five bucks a month boutique set of small selection of really high quality minis. Uh, it's great. Like 
you know, it's 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 fine by me. I hope that that is a method that leads to success for them and lets them keep doing this. Right. Um, yeah, and lets them keep because uh, it would be a bad like Duncan Chat uh, though has been in this industry like since before almost anybody and do does some really awesome miniatures. Uh, the the giants that they do is just amazing, and it would be it would be sad without uh, their models still hitting the market. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. With that said, we're going to close this episode out, everyone. It is nice to have talked with you all. We hope that we can chat with you all again next week. If you want to find more, you can do so over at printyourgames.com. And if you want to help us out, the best thing you can do is give us a rating on iTunes or Spotify. Leave us a comment down in the YouTube. Subscribe and share us around. Just, you know, help get the episode seen by more folk. We appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Jefferson J. Thacker, also known as Parent. I'm Kristen Sowers, also known as Lost Sears. Don't, Don't forget, forget to use the protector. Hey, you did it with me. Yay. Yeah. Uh, ben Stanley saying start a discord I will get back to that discord soon <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't know about you Ben resurrected. I got 73 <laughs> notices in 10 minutes today from all the discords I'm in uh, it's, it's so much it's so much uh, the communities love them so that's that's why we do them yeah I mean, no. yeah. I mean imagine the no direction discord that was almost a full time gig yeah right right exactly <laughs> But we'll, well think later. about it. I think it's 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 in it's in the cards, maybe. Yeah. Talk to you all later. Bye bye.